हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन कंटिन्यूएशन विद माय लेक्चर सीरीज यूनिट वन ए के टू एनर्जी साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग फॉर बीटेक सेकेंड ईयर स्टूडेंट्स नाउ आई एम कंटिन्यूइंग विद द नेक्स्ट हेडिंग एंट्रोपी प्रीवियसली आई हैव टोल्ड यू अबाउट प्रोडेंजर टाइम इंडिपेंडेंट डिपेंडेंट इक्वेशन पार्टिकल इन वन डायमेंशनल वेल टू थ्री न्यूमेरिकल ऑन द सेम फ्लो ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड साइकिल and fuel cells now entropy section a it was asked define entropy that is all so it was just a two mark question so you can write entropy now actually we are dealing with the thermodynamic part of your energy science paper unit 1 is already a combination of all your five units unit 1 is very big also please don't forget to subscribe my channel because before your final exams four days before you will be getting a fully solved model paper okay entropy the measure of a system's thermal energy per unit temperature that is unavailable for doing useful work because work is obtained from ordered molecular motion so the amount of entropy is also a measure of the molecular disorder or randomness of a system entropy is a thermodynamic quantity it is a state function it depends on the state of the system and it does not depend upon the path followed by the system its unit in si is joules per kilomole in cgs it is calorie per kilomole entropy and temperature have a numerical relationship of del s is equal to q upon t where q is amount of heat that is flowing and t is the absolute temperature if you have been given two states you can write this expression as del s is equal to q into 1 upon t2 minus 1 upon t1 where obviously t1 should be greater than t2 and one more equation you can write for entropy as q2 by q1 is equal to t2 upon t1 what is entropy entropy is a measure of the system's thermal energy per unit temperature that is unavailable for doing any type of useful work because work is obtained from ordered molecular motion carnot cycle numericals have been asked on carnot cycle and uh, efficiency numerical on this formula has been asked so let us begin with this this was section c question the most efficient heat engine cycle is the carnot cycle consisting of two isothermal processes and two adiabatic processes isothermal and adiabatic look at this diagram of carnot cycle can you see two isothermal processes and two heat absorbing adiabatic processes net work that is done on a pressure volume curve is the amount of area covered by that specific curve this is some basic of thermodynamics but you don't need to know that you have to specify your answer for carton cycle so with the second law of thermodynamics which states that not all the supplied heat in a heat engine can do useful work carnot efficiency sets the limiting value on the fraction of heat which can be used so in order to approach the carnot efficiency the process involved in the heat engine cycle must be reversible and involve no change in entropy that means carnot cycle is an idealization since no real engine processes the reversible and all real physical processes involve the same increase in entropy efficiency of a heat engine cycle is given by work done and the amount of heat that went into it so it is equal to w upon qh in ideal carnot cycle we get th minus tc upon th using these two expressions we can also find out the expression in a simpler form for carnot cycle that is total generalized form from clausius theorem can be integral dq upon t is equal to 
for different form of any point of the cycle, dS is equal to dQ upon T. Stirling engine is a heat engine which was invert, invented by Robert Stirling. It is based on gas properties and thermodynamic laws and principles. The engine uses an external heat source in contrast with combust engines. So there is no explosion inside the cylinder while working. The gas is expanded and compressed cylindrically and continuously to produce motion to transforming energies. The engine offers the possibility of having higher efficiency with less exhaust emissions in comparison with the internal combustion engine. Stirling engine has high performance in many applications like multi-fluid characteristic, very good cooling source, quiet operation is required, relatively low speed operation is permitted, constant power output operation is permitted, a long warm-up period is permitted. Operating principles of Stirling engine, Stirling engine consists of a cylinder containing a gas, a piston and a displacer. The regenerator and a flywheel are other complementary parts of the engine. When heat part of cylinder is heated up by an external heat source, this is basically the diagram of operating principle of Stirling engine. The mechanical students must be familiar with it, but the civil students must be seeing it for the first time. The important parts, I repeat, are a piston, a displacer, regenerator, and flywheel. The total volume is constant and limited by piston, thus expanded gas pushes the piston down so the volume of the pressurized gas is increased and the gas loses its pressure and temperature. Then the piston backs to the heat side and compresses the gas by momentum force of the flywheel. The gas expanding pushes the piston down again to produce mechanical energy for doing work. This cycle continues and we get work. The flywheel and regenerator have great roles also to play because the flywheel converts the linear movement of a working piston to rotatory movement. It gives needed momentum for the cycle procedure. Stirling engine, you can remember this for your final exam, has four phases, heating, expansion, cooling, compression. Heating, that is heat source provides thermal energy to the engine so that it raises the pressure and temperature of the gas. Expansion, that means in this phase, the volume increases, but the pressure and temperature decreases. Mechanical energy is produced from heat energy during this phase of cycle only. Cooling, the gas is cooled and the temperature and pressure decrease. So the gas is prepared to be compressed during this cycle. Compression, the pressure of gas increases whereas its volume decreases. And you can see first it heats, it expands, it cools and in this cycle work is taken out. See, heating, expansion, cooling, compression, the Stirling cycle. And we know that in thermodynamics, the formula for energy is E is equal to pressure into volume or NRT, which is a constant. So you can see these different types of the Stirling cycles, efficiency of Stirling cycle, any cycle will have a heat source, the engine will take up the heat that it requires to do work and the remaining has been sent here down QC. Stirling engine and Carnet engine comparison. This was asked in your uh, AKTU paper that compare both the engines. So the Stirling engine is working on the auto cycle. You will just study right now after this lecture. Carnet engine is working on the diesel cycle. Petrol or gasoline of high octane fuel is used. Diesel or high octane fuel is used. High self ignition temperature, low self ignition temperature. Fuel and air are introduced as a gaseous mixture. 
fuel is injected directly into the combustion chamber. Here it is introduced, here it is injected. Here spark plug is used for ignition system. It has a self ignition system, that is why. And here higher maximum rotation per minute due to lower weight, here it is lower. Maximum efficiency lower due to lower compression ratio. Maximum efficiency higher due to higher compression ratio. So this comparison between Stirling engine and Carnet was asked twice in your exam. Phase change material. What do you mean by the word phase change? Phase, like I give you a very simple example. You put ice outside your fridge uh, uh, in, at room temperature, it will start melting and it will become liquid. If you heat that liquid, it will turn into vapor. So what has happened? Phase has changed in chemistry. From solid, it has become liquid and then it has taken the gaseous form. So phase changing materials, what are they doing? Like that ice cube absorbed energy, water released energy. So phase change material, uh, you can expect some question like this that write a short note on phase change. So a phase change material is a substance which absorbs or releases sufficient energy at phase transition to provide the amount of useful heating or cooling effect which is required. Generally, the transition will be from one of the two fundamental states of matter. That is solid to liquid. See, ice cube was solid, water is liquid or it can be vice versa. If you put that water back into fridge, it will again change into ice and take the solid form. So phase transition is between, may also be between non-classical states of matter like crystals, et cetera, can go into phase change from a different energy states with the release of energy or the absorption of energy relates, re re relates to phase transition. Heat of fusion is also responsible for phase transition. So by melting and solidifying at phase change temperature, a phase change material is capable of storing and releasing large amounts of energy compared to your sensible heat storage system. There are two principal classes of phase change material. The organic carbon containing materials derived from petroleum or plants or animals and used in natural salts from sea or from mineral deposits. A third class is from solid to solid phase change. Many commercial applications are especially in the energy storage cycles. So micro encapsulation also allows the material to remain solid in the form of bubbles, etc. Thermodynamic cycles. This is thermal physics. According to second law of thermodynamics, heat cannot spontaneously flow from a colder location to a hotter area. Work is required for this. And this type of work and all are governed by thermodynamic cycles. Today we will study heat pump and refrigeration cycles which can be classified as vapor compression, vapor absorption gas cycles or sterling gas cycles. The vapor compression cycle is used in most household refrigerators you are compressing the vapor as well as in many large commercial and industrial refrigeration systems. Look at the single stage vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Condenser may be water cooled or air cooled. You are using a compressor and a condenser and then again you expand it as per your requirement typical single stage vapor compression cycle. The thermodynamics of the cycle can be analyzed as follows. In this cycle, a circulating working fluid commonly called refrigerant such as freon enters the compressor as a vapor. The vapor is compressed at constant entropy and exits the compressor superheated. 
the superheated vapor travels through the condenser which first cools and removes the superheat and then condenses the vapor into liquid by removing additional heat at constant pressure the liquid refrigerant goes through the expansion valve where its pressure abruptly decreases causing flash evaporation and auto refrigeration here you can see the cycle from 1 to 2 it is compression of vapor from 2 to 3 vapor superheat remover in condenser from 3 to 4 vapor converted to liquid in condenser from 4 to 5 liquid flashes into liquid and from 5 to 1 liquid plus vapor converter this is the temperature entropy diagram of your vapor compression cycle vapor absorption cycle the absorption cycle is similar to the compression cycle except in this method of raising the pressure of refrigerant vapor in the absorption system the compressor is replaced by an absorber which dissolves the refrigerant in a suitable liquid a liquid pump which raises the pressure and a generator which on heat addition drives off the refrigerant gas cycle when working fluid is a gas that is compressed and expanded but does not change phase the refrigeration cycle is called a gas cycle air is most often this working fluid there is no condensation and evaporation intended in the gas cycle coefficient of performance performance of all your uh, thermal physics will depend upon what output your setup is giving what input you had given that is efficiency output upon input like how much output you gave compared to the amount of input that was given in your uh, Uh, uh any a work so the efficiency of a refrigerator or heat pump is given by coefficient of performance numerical has come on coefficient of performance that is desired output upon required input if it is cooling effect then like a fridge so how much input was given if it is heating effect like an heater then the heating effect upon work input so coefficient of performance of a refrigerator and a heat pump can be greater than 1 also and coefficient for ideal refrigeration is equal to the difference in temperatures here delta t upon delta t so phase change materials are also used in uh, uh, for refrigeration or for heating examples of phase change materials can be a uh, hydrocarbons primarily the paraffin chemistry ones freeze without much super cooling ability to melt self nucleating disadvantages low thermal conductivity in their solid state high heat transfer rates etc in organic salts disadvantages difficult to prevent incongruous melting and phase separation salt hydrated ones also are advantage and disadvantage in the phase change cycle hygroscopic materials also can be used for phase change solid solid phase change materials rather uh, transition takes place from solid state to solid state only melting temperature in the desired output range should be there oh thank you